Today we're going to look at installing SSH Server. Now that's a native component of Windows 10 and Windows Server 2019. We're currently looking at the 2019 version so we're just going to go ahead and get the Windows compatibility online where a uh, component name is OpenSSH and we'll see that there's two components. One is already installed. Uh, this is natively installed on later versions. And the other one is the server. So we're going to add the Windows component capability and we're going to go ahead and get the open SSH server. Now this is a relatively straightforward command although the syntax can be a little funky. And while that installs um, we're going to say that there's two ways of connecting to SSH afterwards. One is using the username and password and the other one is using the private public key authentication with SSH. So we're going to look at both as we go through this. Now once our installation is finished, which it should do any second now, uh, we're going to go ahead and set the other parts of this. So we can see now both components are installed. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start up the service itself because we want to have a, a running service in order to be able to do anything. We're going to set the service to automated startup as well so that we don't need to worry about starting it after a reboot or any other form of random reboots that happen. And we're going to go ahead and check that the firewall is in place too. Now the firewall setting is usually added during the installation, but just in case it's not, we'll, we'll just check. So here we can see that the firewall setting is also present. Now with that in mind, we're going to pop over to our other machine and we're going to try and SSH in remotely. So here I'm just going to go in as administrator and SSH in using the IP address because we don't have DNS resolution set up in our, our lab, uh, lab here just yet. You can see I'm asked to authenticate the fingerprint and then I'm prompted for a username and password. So I can go ahead and enter the password and I'm connected. So that's that's pretty straightforward, um, but obviously username and password isn't something we really want to do. So let's go back and reconfigure this. So we're going to change this over to a private key. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and download the private key, which I happen to have already ready. Now you can transfer your private key in multiple ways. I'm going to do it this way, which is to just download it from um, basically a public repository where I have it uploaded, aka GitHub. And you can see that's the content that gets thrown into this new file. So if I just go and show you, there's the uh, program data folder, and we now have a new file that contains the, the key directory. Now what I want to show you is the permissions there is not the same as the permissions on the rest of the files in the directory. And this can be a problem, and therefore it's best to kind of fix this so that the permissions are not different. Now you could manually do this and that's time consuming, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and use a, a straightforward um, get uh, uh, access list and copy it from another file directly onto the one that we want. That way we, we don't need to worry about it. And we can just quickly see that our access list is now changed. Straightforward, pretty simple way of fixing it. Um, this is also a step that I've included into the script that it will be in the comments below. So you don't need to worry about typing all of this out yourself, but please just follow along with the video for the moment. Now, next thing we're going to do is reset the config. So we're going to go ahead and change the public key, which is hashed out and to not being hashed out and the password authentication. We're going to set to no, because we don't want to use password authentication. Now if I just check what I've done here, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open it up in notepad so we can browse the config file itself. Uh, keep in mind you can also modify the config file directly from notepad, but you must make sure the terminal you've opened is in administrator mode because if you don't open it as administrator you will not be able to change the file settings. So we can see here that the required settings that I asked to be changed have been done. So all's good. And since our account is in the administrators group, it will be going against the administrators authorized keys, which is the file we created. If we were not the administrator, it would actually look for the SSH key under our profile. But in this case, since we're a member of the administrators group, we don't need to worry about that right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and restart the SSH. So the server is now restarted. Now I'm going to hop back over to my Linux machine. And I'm going to go ahead and try the connection again. 
And as you can see, this time, absolutely no password required because I already have my private key on the Linux machine and the public key is on the, the server I'm connecting to. Now, as you can see, I didn't want to have DIR. I wanted to use the ls command, so this is another setting that I can change. So I want the default shell that when I'm connecting to be PowerShell. So this is a straightforward change and it's just a matter of updating the registry. So here we go ahead and create a new item under the HK local machine software. Uh, open SSH and create the default shell directory. Now if I open regedit and browse to that same key. So we go down to software and open SSH and we can see that default shell here is now listed and full path of PowerShell. So if I again go from the Windows machine back over to my Linux one just for a moment and obviously restarting in between just to be on the safe side um, I can then go in and if I run an ls command because I'm now as a PowerShell is my default shell I can run that quite normally as I would expect to see and I've got my remote host name and local host name just confirming that this is all working. Hopefully you found this useful. If not, you know what to do.